In this video we're going to be making this quadruped robot with 5 servo motors. It is able to rotate left and right, and walk forward and backwards. It can be wireless via Bluetooth, or wired via USB. Its movement is controlled by keyboard key presses using a Python script. Let's first take a look at how it moves. To move forwards and backwards, the servos and the legs rotate creating a new point of contact with the ground. They then return back to their original position which propels the robot either forwards or backwards, depending if the servos are rotated in one direction or the other. To handle turning, there is a servo placed at the base of the robot. To turn, we press a key on our keyboard to make the four legs of the robot rotate out of the way. The base servo is then in contact with the floor. We can then rotate the base servo to turn the robot up to 90 degrees in either direction. Once rotation is complete we can put the four legs back down which will stop rotation. The base servo then goes back to its default position of 80 degrees ready for the next time we need to turn the robot. Let's now take a look at how to construct this robot. The first thing we will need is an Arduino. We need to load standard Fermata onto it, which allows us to communicate with the Arduino over a COM port in Python. As we're going to be making the robot wireless, with the Bluetooth enabled HC05 module we need to edit the standard Fermata script to have a baud rate of 9600, as the HC05 module uses this rate as default. In the standard Fermata script, search for Fermata begin. Then change the rate to 9600 and upload it to your board. Once the upload is complete you can disconnect your Arduino from your computer. Next let's build the frame of our robot. We will need 5 servo motors that each have a 180 degree rotation. I'm using Tower Pro SG92Rs which have a holding torque of 2.5 kilograms. But you can use whatever model you have available. Let's use a breadboard for this step. The servo motors should have 3 wires. A brown wire for ground, a red wire for power, and a yellow wire for servo control. Connect all the brown wires to the ground bus of the breadboard. Connect all the red wires to the positive bus of the breadboard. And connect the yellow wires to pins 3, 5, 6, 9, and 10 of the Arduino. These are all pulse with modulation pins. Also connect the 5 volts of the Arduino to the positive bus of the breadboard and the ground of the Arduino to the negative bus. When we're building our robot, we want all the servos to be in the same starting position. So let's write some quick Python code to set the position of all the servos to 80 degrees. Open up idle and create a new script. From Pi Firmata import Arduino and Servo. Let's also import a few libraries that we will use later to control the robot. Import time and threading. From threading import thread and from Pi input import key and listener. Then declare your board. For my wired connection I will be using COM port 3. This may be different on your computer. We also need to set the board rate to 9600. Let's then declare all of our pins and set their mode to Servo. Then let's use the right method to set the starting rotation of all the servos to 80 degrees. Add a time sleep between each servo right, so that we don't draw too much power from our Arduino at once, and put the value of sleep to a variable which we will create called duration. Then create the duration variable and set its value to 0.2. Now if we run the code, all our servos will go to the rotation of 80 degrees. Unplug the Arduino and then let's connect the Bluetooth module. We will be using HC05 for this. Place the HC05 on the first half of your breadboard, then connect a wire from the RX pin to a few rows away, leaving a space before the end of the first half of the breadboard. Then connect a 2000 ohm resistor underneath the jumper wire and connect it to the ground bus of the breadboard. Then above the jumper wire, connect a 1000 ohm resistor. This will reduce the voltage from the Arduino from 5 volts to 3 volts going to the RX pin. Then connect another jumper wire from above the 1000 ohm resistor to the TX pin of the Arduino. Now connect another jumper wire between the TX pin of the HC05 and the RX pin of the Arduino.
Then connect the ground of the HC05 to the ground bus of the breadboard and the VCC of the Arduino to the positive bus of the breadboard that completes the circuit. If we now add a battery connector to the Arduino and add a 9 volt battery, we should see that our HC05 module starts to flash as it searches for a Bluetooth connection to pair to. If your computer doesn't have Bluetooth, you can use a USB Bluetooth converter like this one. Now on your computer, type Bluetooth in the search bar and go into the settings. Click Add Bluetooth or Other Device, then click Bluetooth. Your computer will now scan for any available devices. Select HC05 from the list then connect to it. The default password will be either 1, 2, 3, 4, or 0, 0, 0, 0. Then press Connect. This will pair the HC05 with your computer. You will need to update your COM port in the Python script. I'm using COM port 5 for my connection, then run the code. When the script connects to the HC05, it will reset the value of your servo motors to 0 when connecting to them, then it will set them back to 80 like so. Now that our connection's working, let's unplug the battery and build the frame for our robot. Use a glue gun and glue two servos onto a craft stick. The glue and glue guns is strong enough to hold the frame together and weak enough to take apart if we need to later. This will be the left leg control servos. Then glue another servo to the center of the craft stick. This will be the base servo control responsible for the robot's rotation. We then need to do the same for the right leg as we did for the left leg. Glue two more servos to another craft stick. Then glue the right leg servos onto the base servo like so. Now let's construct the legs. Here I've cut two pieces of cardboard with a bend in the middle. I then glue them together to make a foot and glue the foot to another craft stick to form a leg. This by itself may not create enough resistance on the floor to move the robot, so here I add some rubber pads to the bottom of the foot which will increase the surface resistance. We need to create four legs in the same way for our robot like so. We also need to add resistance to our base servo. So create a base servo leg that is half a craft stick with some rubber pads stuck to it. Now glue each of the four legs onto the servos. Make sure that they are all the same height. I'm aiming for the center of the craft stick as the point of contact with the servo. This seems to be the right length to get enough stability to control the robot without it falling over. Once the four legs are attached, Turn the robot upside down and glue on the base servo leg. Let the legs dry in place, adding more glue if required to strengthen the connections. Here I have another craft stick with a piece of cardboard glued to it. I'm going to add this on top of the servo motors, as we're going to be placing the breadboard on the motors. We don't want it to slide around or the wires to get caught in the legs, so adding this strip will allow us to keep components from hitting the legs. Next place the breadboard with all the connections on top of the frame. We can stick this down with double-sided tape, but we may need to adjust the position after we have coded the robot movement, so that the weight is evenly distributed across the legs of the robot. Now that the frame is complete, we can start writing our Python code to control the robot's movement. I've changed the COM port back to COM3 so that I can use a wired connection for testing servo movements. As we're going to be using threading to control our robot's movement, we need to check if a thread is complete before starting a new one. Create a variable that has a value of none which we can use in this process. Next let's create a variable which contains the current direction. This will be either up, down, forward, back or left or right. We can give it a number value of 1 as default. Let's also create a rotation variable which we can use to pass through rotations to our servos and set the default value to 80. Let's now create the function to get the key press keys from our keyboard. When a key is pressed, let's call a function called call function. And when a key is released, let's call a function called on release. Let's use threading to call the key press function and start the thread. 
Now create the onRelease function, which checks if either the WASD or Q or E keys are pressed. It then checks if the walking thread is alive. If this is the case, then call the join method to wait for the thread to complete. We also want to call a board stop to stop all loops on the board. If there is currently a thread running, then we want to pass. Now let's create a function which will be used to assign the servo rotation. Just pass through the global rotation for now. Now create a function which allocates the direction based on the specific keyboard key being pressed. For instance, if the A key is pressed, we can assign the direction variable's value to zero. We can then in our walk function. Check if the value of direction is zero and control the servo movement based on this key. We can do similar for all the direction keys. We also need to check if the thread is none or not alive. As we only want to call a movement function when there isn't one already running, then we can start a new thread of the walk function. Do this for every key press. We will need to set the direction for left, right, forwards, backwards, and up and down so add one to the direction variable for each of the iterations. Now in our walk function let's change the rotation of all four legs if the W key is pressed meaning that the direction is 2. The default position is 80 so changing this value will make the legs move in one direction or another. The specific direction may be different for your servo motors. So you will need to play with the direction and pins to get it moving in the correct direction. For the walk forward movements, we want our front two legs to move forwards first which are then followed by our back two legs, then all legs are moved back to 80 degrees. This will propel the robot forwards. To move backwards, we check if the direction is 4, if it is then we do the opposite of the move forwards function, this time the legs should rotate backwards. To raise the legs so that the base servo is in contact with the floor, we need to check if the direction is 4. If it is, we want to raise the four legs out of the way. If the direction is 5, which means that the E key is pressed, then we want to move the legs back down. If the direction is 0, which means turn left, then we want to use the rotation variable by getting the current rotation value and adding 5 degrees to it. This means that when the key is held down, the servo will continuously rotate 5 degrees to the left or right depending on the key press, allowing us to fine-tune the rotation. To rotate to the right, we use the same method except, instead of adding 5 degrees to the rotation we take 5 away to turn in the opposite direction. We check whether the value is below 0 or above 180 on these statements so that we don't go over or under the maximum rotation of the servos. That's it for the code. If we now connect our Arduino to the USB, remembering to disconnect the HC05RX and TX pins whilst using the USB, then run the code. We will see that when we press the WASD or Q and E keys, the robot's legs will move according to our specified rotations in the walk function. If the robot legs are too wide, we can adjust the values of our rotations to be closer to the default position of 80 degrees. If the direction of the leg rotation is wrong, then you may need to adjust the rotation based on your wiring and pin setup. But you should be able to follow the same method for creating the walk function with your own rotation values. Increasing or decreasing the duration variable will affect the robot's speed. But note that if the speed is higher, then more power will be used on your board. So you may need to adjust the duration settings to get the right speed for your robot. The range that worked well for me was a 0.2 to 0.5 sleep duration. To use the HC05, you will need to reconnect the RX and TX pins, and connect your battery, then change the COM port in your Python script back to your Bluetooth COM port. As we're controlling 5 servos, it's important that the battery is fully charged, otherwise there won't be enough power supplied to supply all five servos and the script may crash or lose connection. If we wanted to upgrade this project we could add an additional power supply to cover and loss of power to the servos.
Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this.